me now the man known as the architect of Obamacare, economics professor at MIT, Jonathan Gruber. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good to be here. It's nice to have you here. We have a lot of questions for you. Is Obamacare imploding? No, Obamacare is not imploding. The main goal of Obamacare was twofold. One was to cover the uninsured, of which we've covered 20 million, uh, the largest expansion in American history. The other was to fix broken insurance markets where insurers could deny people insurance just because they were sick or they had been sick. Those have been fixed, and for the vast majority of Americans, costs in those markets have come down thanks to the subsidies made available under Obamacare. But look at what's happening now. Um, premiums are going to raise 22% for some people on the, in, in, who are enrolled in Obamacare. Not only that, but some people's deductibles are so extraordinarily high, it, it would be silly for them to go to the doctor because it, it, they can't afford paying their deductible. Uh, first of all, the 22% increase, let's remember who that applies to. That applies to a very small fraction of people who have to buy insurance without the subsidies that are available. 85% of people buying insurance on these exchanges get subsidies. And for those people, this premium increase doesn't affect them. Now, for those remaining people, that is a problem. And that's something we need to address. But it's not a crisis. It doesn't mean the system's collapsing. And most importantly, it doesn't affect the 150 million Americans who get employer insurance who have actually seen the premiums fall dramatically relative to what was expected before Obamacare. Okay, so let's talk about how exactly you can fix Obamacare. So, so, and I, and I just need you to be specific because I think people really want answers. So Hillary Clinton says she can fix Obamacare. So what would one fix that would drive premiums down? Look, once again, there's no sense in which this has to be fixed. The law is working as, as designed. However, it could work better. And I think probably the most important thing experts would agree on is that we need a larger mandate penalty. We have individuals who are essentially free riding on the system. They're essentially waiting until they get sick and they're getting health insurance. The whole idea of this plan, which was pioneered in Massachusetts, was that the individual mandate penalty would bring those people into the system and have them participate. The penalty right now is probably too low, and, and that's, that's something I think ideally we would fix. So, so somebody who's president could go to Congress and say, you know what, lawmakers, this is a fix. Can, can you pass this? Is that what would have to happen to put that fix into place? Basically, it's hard to know what dramatic fix we could do without Cong Congress participating in the process. We could do things like the stronger mandate is one. We could do things like increasing the pressure on states to expand their Medicaid programs, a horrible act of political malpractice where states have left millions of people of their lowest income citizens uncovered. We could do things like that, but a lot of that would involve congressional participation. It's hard to know what you can do just on your own as a new administration. What, what about the insurers that have fled the system? How do, you, how do you convince them to come back or new companies to sign on? Once again, I think the press here has been misleading. Some insurers are leaving. Other insurers are thriving. I think what you have is a system where we've shaken up the status quo, exactly what we expect a new innovation, disruptive innovation, if you will, to do. Insurers who are thriving the old system are finding this new system sort of hard for them. Other insurers are doing really well. And what's going to happen is the natural process as the market evolves. These premiums are going to increase. That's going to allow profitable opportunities for new insurers to enter. They are and bring premiums back down. So we're just seeing the ups and downs of a new market. What you have to remember is that premiums in 2014 came in way below expected. In fact, where they are today is exactly where they thought they'd be today. It's just they came in lower than we thought and they rose faster than we thought. And that's just sort of the unpredictability of a new market. That will settle down over time and, if, if, and new, new insurers will enter. Okay, so hindsight is 2020, right? Looking back, yeah. is there one thing that you wish was done differently? Uh, I think there's really probably two things I wish was done differently. One is I think the, I wish the mandate penalty was stronger. The other I wish uh, the federal government had uh, done more to get states to expand their Medicaid programs. I think um, that this is a fundamental flaw in our system that states uh, are leaving so many citizens uncovered and citizens who are sick who are coming into this exchange pool and, and making it more expensive. So realistically, um you know, after the next president is put into office, what do you think will happen with Obamacare? I think nothing much is going to happen, to be honest. I think that basically a system that largely works, that the flaws you're seeing now or the premium increase you're seeing now are just the natural dynamics of a market as it transitions to its new 
uh, to its new state, and I think that we're just going to let it go for a couple of years, and it's going to get better on its own. What, and based, what, what if, I think, what if, a system what which if largely Trump works. becomes president, he has a Republican Congress, and he does repeal it. What happens then? Well, first of all, he won't repeal it. Remember, the whole argument Republicans have made against this law is that people didn't get to keep insurance they liked. Well, you have 20 million Americans or more who are now getting insurance that they like. You're not going to take that away from them. And let's be clear, there is no replace. There's only repeal. Okay, there is no Republican alternative to this law, and the reason is because this is fundamentally a bipartisan legislation that was originally drafted on Republican principles, to be honest. And so there is no Republican alternative. So his repeal and replace is just repeal and leave people uninsured. That's not going to happen. All right, Jonathan.